Chapter 39. Find that idiot boy and shoot him for me, Cody! Prof screamed into my ear as I unmuted my mobile. We're pulling out, John, Tia said, talking over him. I'm on my way in the copter. Three minutes until I arrive. Abraham will blow the cover explosion. Abraham can go to hell, Prof spat. <laughs> I'm seeing this to the end. You can't fight a high epic, John, Tia said. I'll do whatever I want. I'm... His voice cut out. I've removed him from the feed, Tia said to the rest of us. This is bad. I've never heard him go this far. We need to pull him out somehow, or we'll lose him. Lose him, Cody said. Cody asked, sounding confused. I could hear gunfire through the line near him, and could hear the same gunfire up ahead, echoing in the wide corridor. I kept running. I'll explain later, Tia said, in the type of voice it really meant, I'll find a better way to dodge that question later. There, I thought, catching a bit of light up ahead. It was dark outside, but not as pitch black as it was in the tunnel-like confines of the stadium's innards. The gunfire was louder. I'm pulling us out, Tia continued. Abraham, I need you to blow that explosion in the ground when I say. Cody, have you found David yet? Be warned, Nightwielder might be on your back. She thinks I'm dead, I thought, because I haven't been answering. I'm here, I said. David! Tia said, sounding relieved. What is your status? Nightwielder is down, I said, reaching the tunnel out onto the field, one of the ones that the teams had used when running out to play. The UV worked. I think Firefight is gone, too. I drove him off. What? How? Um, I'll explain later. Fair enough, Tia said. We have about two minutes until I extract. Get to Cody. I didn't reply. I was taking in the field. Battlefield is right, I thought, stunned. The bodies of enforcement soldiers lay scattered like discarded trash. Fires burned in several locations, sending smoke twisting up into the dark sky. Red flares blazed across the field, thrown by soldiers to get better light. Chunks had been blown out of the seating in the ground, and blackened scars marred the once silver steel. You guys have been fighting a war, I whispered. Then I caught sight of Steelheart. He strode across the field, lips parted and teeth clenched in a sneer. His glowing hand was forward, and he blasted shot after shot towards something in front of him. Prof, running behind one of the team benches, blast after blast nearly hit him, but he ducked and dodged between them, incredibly nimble. He pushed through a wall in the side of the stadium, his tensors vaporizing an opening for him. Steelheart bellowed in aggravation, firing blasts into the hole. Prof appeared a moment later, breaking out of another wall, steel dust pouring down around him. He whipped his hand forward, throwing a series of crude daggers towards Steelheart. They had likely been cut from the steel itself. They just bounced off the high epic. Prof looked frustrated, as if he were annoyed he couldn't hurt Steelheart. For my part, I was amazed. Has he been doing this the whole time? I asked. Yeah, Cody said. Like I said, man's a machine. I scanned the field to my right and picked out Cody behind some rubble. He was leaning forward on his rifle and tracking a group of enforcement soldiers in the first level seats. They had set up a large machine gun behind some blast shields, and Cody looked pinned down, which explained why he hadn't been able to come find me. I stuffed my handgun in its holster and unwrapped the flashlight from my sto the stock of my rifle. I'm almost there, gentlemen, Tia said. No more attempts to kill Steelheart. All phases aborted. We need to take this chance and leave while we can. I don't think Prof is going to go, Abraham said. I'll deal with Prof, Tia said. Fine, Abraham answered. Where are you going to? Guys, I cut in. Be careful what you say in the general link. I think our lines might have been hacked. Impossible, Tia said. Mobile networks are secure. Not if you have access to an authorized mobile, I answered, and Steelheart might have recovered Megan's. There was silence on the line. Sparks, Tia said. I'm an idiot. Ah, finally something makes sense, Cody said, firing a shot at the soldiers. That mobile... Something moved in the opening to the building behind Cody. I cursed, raising my rifle, but without the stock it was very hard to aim properly. I pulled the trigger as an armed enforcement officer leapt out. I missed. 
He fired a staccato burst. There was no sound from Cody, but I could see the blood spray. No, 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 I thought, taking off at a run. I fired again, this time clipping the soldier on the, sh on the shoulder. It didn't get past his armor, but he turned from Cody, sighting on me. He fired. I raised my left hand, the one with the tensor. I did it almost by instinct. It was tougher to make the song this time, and I didn't know why. But I made it work. I let the song out. I felt something thump against my palm, and puff a puff of steel dust sprayed off my hand. It smarted something incredible, and the tensor started sparking. A moment later, a series of gunshots sounded, and the soldier dropped below. Abraham came around the corner behind the man. Gunfire from above. I dashed and skidded against the ground, sliding behind Cody's cover. He was there, gasping, eyes wide. He'd been hit several times, three in the leg, one in the gut. Cover us, Abraham said in his calm voice, whipping out a bandage. He tied it around Cody's leg. Tia, Cody is hit badly. I'm here, Tia said. In the chaos, I hadn't noticed the sounds of the copter. I've created new mobile channels using a direct feed to each of you. That's what we should have done the moment Megan lost her mobile. Abraham, we need to extract. Now! I peeked up over the rubble. Soldiers were climbing down from the stands to move on us. Abraham casually pulled a grenade off his belt and tossed it into the hallway behind us in case someone was trying to sneak up again. It exploded and I heard shouts. I swapped my rifle for Cody's, then opened fire on those advancing soldiers. Some went for cover, but others continued moving. Others continued moving, bold. They knew we were at the end of our resources. I kept firing, but was rewarded with a series of clicks. Cody had been almost out of ammo. Here, Abraham said, dropping his large assault rifle beside me. Tia, where are you? Near your position, she said. Just outside the stadium, head straight back and out. I'm bringing Cody, Abraham said. Cody was still conscious, though he was mostly just cursing at the moment with his eyes squeezed shut. I nodded to Abraham. I'd cover their retreat. I took up Abraham's assault rifle. To be honest, I'd always wanted to fire the thing. It was a very satisfying weapon to use. The recoil was soft and the weapon felt lighter than it should have. I set it on the small front tripod and let loose on fully automatic, dozens of rounds ripping through the soldiers trying to get to us. Abraham carried Cody out the back way. Prof and Steelheart were still fighting. I downed another soldier, Abraham's high-caliber rounds ignoring most of the soldier's armor. As I fired, I could feel the handgun under my arm, pressing against my side. We'd never tried firing that, the last of our guesses at how to beat Steelheart. There was no way I could hit Steelheart at this range, though, and Tia had decided to pull us out before we tried it, calling the operation. I gunned down another soldier. The stadium trembled as Steelheart fired a series of blasts at Prof. I can't extract now, I thought, despite what Tia said. I've got to try the gun. We're in the copter, Abraham said in my ear. David, time to move. I still haven't tried phase four. I said, climbing up to a kneeling position and firing on the soldiers again. One tossed a grenade in my direction, but I was already pulling back into the corridor. And Prof is still out there. We're about, we're boarding, Tia said. Retreat! Prof will escape using the tensors. He'll never stay ahead of Steelheart, I said. Besides, do you really want to run without trying this? I ran my finger along the gun in its holster. Tia was silent. I'm going for it, I said. If you take heat, pull out. I ran off the field and back into the hallways beneath the stands, holding Abraham's assault rifle and listening to soldiers shout behind me. Steelheart and Prof were moving this direction, I thought. I just need to wrap around and get close enough to fire on him. I can do it from behind. It would work. It had to work. Those soldiers were following me. Abraham's gun had a grenade launcher underneath. Any ammunition? Those were meant to be fired before exploding, but I could use my remote detonator pen and an eraser tab to make one go off. No luck. The gun was out of grenades. I cursed, but then saw the remote fire switch on the gun. I grinned, then stopped, spun, and put the gun on the ground, 
wedged back against a trunk of steel. I flipped the switch and ran. It started firing like crazy, spraying the corridor behind me with bullets. It probably wouldn't do much damage, but all I needed was a short breather. I heard soldiers yelling at one another to take cover. That would do. I reached another opening and left the hallway, dashing out onto the playing field. Smoke curled in patches from the ground. Steelheart's blasts seemed to smolder after they hit, starting fires on things that shouldn't burn. I raised the pistol, and in a fleeting moment, I wondered what Abraham would say when he learned that I'd lost his gun. Again. I spotted Steelheart, who was turned away from me, distracted by Prof. I ran for all I was worth, passing through clouds of smoke, leaping over rubble. Steelheart started to turn as I approached. I could see his eyes, imperious and arrogant. His hands seemed to burn with energy. I pulled to a halt in the whipping smoke, arms shaking as I raised the gun. The gun that had killed my father. The only weapon that had ever wounded this monster in front of me. I fired three shots.